the mystery of the book with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals, I was seeking the Lord one morning when the Lord appeared to me, and he spoke to me and said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I never change, even to this day I am still the beginning and the end, and I always will be, then the Lord began to talk to me about that which is written in Revelation 5, in this divine encounter the Lord said to me, Servant, all that which John witnessed in the Revelation he did not see it by vision or by dream, but rather I transported him in the spirit to the beginning of the age, where he actually witnessed the war in heaven. John saw Lucifer rebellion and the downfall of his angels, he saw how Satan and his angels fell from heaven, and John reported this in Revelation 12 where there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, the Lord said to me, I also took the apostle John to the end of time where he witnessed the great white throne of judgment, beloved brothers and sisters, until this moment. I had never really given any consideration as to why it was written that Jesus was the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, but now this was taking on a whole new definition for me, how can any man comprehend the power of God, a spiritual being who is not limited to the laws of time and space as man is. I have learned that most unbelief is well rooted in man trying to comprehend the spiritual things of God with natural understanding, it cannot be done and this is why the Lord is willing to give any of us the gift of his Spirit so that we might be able to understand and know God, for it is as it is written, for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man who is in him? Even so, the things of God no man knows, only the Spirit of the Lord, now we have not received the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God so that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God, I then myself experienced a new thing. For after a few thoughts, the Lord allowed for me to quit trying to reason out what had happened to John, I then realized that the Lord was preparing me for something by revealing unto me how he was the Alpha and the Omega, I then became very excited, realizing that the Lord was about to do a new thing for me, then the Lord led me to read all of Revelation 5, and I saw, in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, a book written on both sides, and then sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel, proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in the earth, neither was there any under the earth, who was able to open the book, or who was able to look inside, and I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look upon it. Then one of the elders said unto me, Do not weep, for behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the rout of David has prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals upon it, and I beheld and saw in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty-four elders, fell down before the Lamb, everyone having harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sung a new song saying, You are worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and you have made us to be kings and priests unto our God, and we shall reign on the earth, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels, who were around the throne, and also the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and one thousands and one thousands, and they were saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing, wow! Even though I had read this chapter many times before, I had never before realized just how big of a heavenly event this was, seeing that there was at least 10 million heavenly creatures witnessing this event, the Lord also confirmed for me again that John did not witness this event by vision or dream because one of the 24 elders actually came over to John and spoke to him, brothers, when John wept, he was not weeping just for himself, but for all men, for seeing that there was no man in heaven, or on the earth or beneath the earth that could be found worthy to take the book and remove the seals from off of it, 
he knew that man would forever continue in bondage to the darkness of his own ignorance, and not be allowed to enter into the kingdom of God, John wept because he knew that as long as the book remained sealed, then the truth about all things that pertain to the life of God would remain hidden from the eyes and the ears of man, you know that it is written that eternal life belongs only to those who know God, for the true knowledge of God is the entrance into the kingdom of God, I am the Word, and the Word is God, and my Father and I are one, I am the truth, and no man can come into my Father's presence except by me, no man knows the Father except those who I have revealed the truth of my further unto, only by the revelation knowledge of my truth shall the darkness of your ignorance perish and Satan's habitation be destroyed, I was in prayer seeking the face of the Lord, all of a sudden, I then felt the presence of the Lord come upon me, and in the quickest of moments, I felt like the heavens just parted for me, and suddenly I found myself at this very same event described in Revelation 5. The Lord then showed me the events that occurred from the time that Jesus was crucified on the cross until he appeared as the Lamb that was slain in Revelation 5, I then perceived that there was a lot more about these events than what I had previously understood, and I also perceived that I was about to learn more about Jesus Christ than what I had previously known, when the Lord appeared to me. He asked me, Servant when did I overcame and when did I get the victory? I thought about this for a moment and I answered with that which I had always believed saying, Lord, did you not get the victory when you suffered and died on the cross? But the Lord then asked me, were there not thousands of others that were also crucified on those same Roman crosses like me, and did they not also suffer greatly before they died also? I then answered, yes, Lord, they did, then the Lord said, so then, if the victory was gotten through the suffering and the death of the cross, then why did not all of those thousands who suffered and died in like manner also get the victory? Should not they also be worshipped and served as Lord? I then answered very timidly, Lord, I suppose that the reason that I do not worship them is because they did not die for my sins like you did? Then the Lord answered and said, This is truth. For I willingly offered myself up for you so that by my blood your sins could be forgiven, and that you could be sanctified by this truth. I shed my blood so that the guilty blood could be redeemed by with the innocent blood, surely the new covenant is established in my blood, let my blood signify unto you that you have a Lord whose love for you is so great that I willing suffered and die for each one who comes to believe on me, let my blood always be a sign unto you, a sign that my love and my forgiveness is greater than the sin that dwells in you, when I died on that cross, the veil in the temple then tore completely in two from top to bottom, signifying the end of the old and the beginning of the new, no longer could the sins of any be atoned for by the blood of bulls and lambs says the Lord, but by my blood only, but still, if the victory was not found the in the suffering and shedding of blood on that cross, then where was it? Was not the only victory that was found on the day of my death that which the wicked thought that they had won because they were able to crucify me? Again, the cross is a symbol of the greatness of the love that I have for all sinners, but truly, it is also a symbol of the hatred that the hypocrites and the wicked have towards all things that pertain to God, do not forget this truth, the only victory that the cross signifies is that which the hypocrites and the wicked thought that they obtained when they crucified me, for it was here that the heathen of this world united with the religion of the self-righteous to murder the Son of God. Have you not yet perceived that even the people of God found more value in choosing a murderer and a thief unto themselves rather than the son sent to them from their God? This is the blindness of this world, the ignorance that keeps those who are carnally minded separated from the life that I created for men to be partakers of, have I not revealed unto you that my will for you is that you may all be partakers of abundant life? Is it not written that when I rule in your hearts, you will experience a peace and joy that those of this world could not possibly experience? I have no desire to reign over the lives of men through force, or by intimidation, or by cruelty, or by oppression, in truth, I was crucified because I came into this world to free the minds of men from the misery and oppression that has ruled over them. Do you now see more clearly how that the victory that the world thought that they had won was to rid the world of all of my influences, my ways, and my thoughts? For my spirit, 
my ways and the my thoughts free the souls of men from the corruption and oppression of worldly governments and false religions, of course, the victory that these thought they had won, it was only an illusion in their own minds, these are they who are blinded by the darkness, ignorant of how great it is for me to be your God, let the cross always be a symbol to you, believing in hearts that you truly are the object of all of my love and affection, for all the thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts to do you good, to give you abundant life and peace of mind, then the Lord asked me, if then the victory was not at the cross, then where was it? Was it in the tomb when I arose from the dead? Seeing that I had erred so with my last answer, I thought the better of it this time, carefully considering what I might say to answer the question that had been asked of me, after I considered it for a time, I then said, Lord, I know that it is written in 1 Corinthians 15:26 that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, so I suppose that if you had trumped over all of your other enemies, then the victory would have surely been won when in that tomb when you arose from the dead, seeing that your overcoming of death would have been the last thing that you had need to triumph over, then the Lord answered me and said, if the victory was in the resurrection, then why did not the victory go to Lazarus or to Jairus daughter after they were raised from the dead? Why was not the victory given to the son of the widow whom Elijah brought back to life? If then the resurrection is truly where the victory is found, then why are none of these worshipped as your Lord and Saviour? I then answered, because Lord, it is written that you alone should be worshipped, now my curiosity was piqued, and I asked, Lord, if the victory was not won at the cross or in the tomb, then where was the victory won? Then the Lord answered and said, It is true that I overcame death, as well as all of the enemies that oppress my people, for it was with me just as it is with all men, that my fight was not with flesh and blood, but with powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness, as well as with all manner of wicked spirits, I overcame all of the forces and the powers that rule over this present evil world. Surely, each one of these triumphs was a great victory, for in each one of them I overcame an enemy that flesh and blood are powerless to overcome, in each of these triumphs, I experienced a victory that no man before me had ever experienced, but still, the victory was not yet, yes, it is truth that the last enemy that I overcame of this world was death, for having overcome this evil world, I was then found to be without blame and unspotted with the filth of this world and it was then that I was accounted worthy to appear before my father's throne, and being found worthy, I was then able to take the book from my father that no creature before me, not in heaven, not on the earth, nor beneath the earth, had been found worthy to before me to do, to take the book and to remove the seals from off of the book, it is here that the victory was won, I did not overcome when I suffered and died on that cross, or when I arose from the dead, but when I took the book with seven seals from the hand of my father, at that very moment ten million heavenly creatures fall upon their faces, rejoicing and singing praises saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Now do you not think that if the victory had been won at the cross, or in that tomb these heavenly creatures would have rejoiced and praised all those who had previously been raised from the dead as well as unto all of those thousands who had suffered and died on the cross? but who among any of these was found worthy to take the book from my father and then open the seals thereof. I alone was found worthy, I alone was found worthy among all the creatures in heaven, among all the creatures on earth, and among all the creatures beneath the earth, I alone overcame the world that is compassed with lies, I alone overcame the worldly man that is perverted through the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of this life. I alone overcame the corrupted judgment of this world, only I alone was found worthy to stand before the glory of the incorruptible God, and then take the book that was sitting upon his lap, it was I, the Lamb of God, who all of these heavenly creatures bowed before and worshipped, singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honour, glory, and blessings. Brothers the Lord then took me in the spirit to the very moment that the events of Revelation 5 were unfolding in heaven, I suddenly found myself among ten million heavenly creatures, and for a moment that was quite overwhelming, I then became aware that we were all like standing as if we were all in a very large and tall circular stadium, but there was no physical stadium, 
I felt as though I was positioned about halfway up the stadium, but it was as if my consciousness I was sitting on the very front row, the first thing that I really became aware of was the electricity and all the excitement that was in every creature that was there, the most excitement that I had personally ever experienced until this moment was before a college football game between in-state rivals, but the electricity and the excitement that was at those games was nowhere near the electricity, excitement that I found myself in the midst of. Not only was the excitement level much, much higher in those around me, but I was in the midst of 10 million creatures who were all excited and joyous, each one was intensely focused, as I presently understand it, on the greatest event that will ever happen throughout all of eternity, I then saw the Heavenly Father sitting on his throne, but for some strange reason, no one, including myself seemed to be putting any attention on him at all but rather on the floor that was just before his throne, for just in front of his throne was a circular area that was only about 10 feet in diameter, can you imagine the drama of seeing all of these creatures pressed in and ascending up as far as my eyes could see, and all their eyes were focused on that space before the throne of God? It is not possible to describe the drama that I felt that was unfolding before me, knowing that at any moment, all of us who were there, were about to witness an event that no creature in heaven, nor any creature on the earth, and that no creature beneath the earth, had ever been found worthy to do, to take this book from off of the Almighty God's lap, and to remove the seals that had been put upon it by the power of God, then, without me even realizing, the Lamb who was slain, suddenly appeared before the throne of God, it is not possible for me to describe to you what I actually saw before me. For Jesus appeared in this moment as though he had just died on the cross in the previous moment, certainly before Mary even had a chance to clean up his dead body. It was at first strange for me to see Jesus to appear before his Holy Father in this manner, seeing I was not expecting for him to appear naked, filthy dirty, bloodied from head to toe, and greatly wounded from the scourging, the beating, and the crucifixion that he had had just gone through. My first thought when I saw Jesus appear before his heavenly in this fashion was how man, in his ignorance of God, believes that he must clean himself before he can come before God, if Jesus had physically appeared before a group of humans in this manner, every man would have gasped in shock at his appearance and or would have been surprised to even see Jesus appear in such a manner, yet, there was not one gasp or look of surprise on the Father's face or on any one of these ten million for everyone was still filled with only excitement and joy, I felt as though I was the only creature that was even aware of the outward appearance of Jesus' body, again, it is hard for one to imagine the drama that was playing out before my very eyes, not only seeing Jesus but also observing the faces of ten million creatures who had been waiting and waiting to see that which they have never before witnessed, but then I saw that which I will never forget. The most incredible thing of all, and it took place the moment that Jesus walked over to stand before his heavenly Father, for the love, the joy, the compassion, and the thankfulness that was in the heavenly Father's face as he gazed upon the face of his Son was indescribable, and the same love and joy was in the Son's face as he looked to his Father, even though I heard no audible words spoken between the two, I was sure that Jesus said, we did it. I then remember how that Jesus had told me previously that he overcame all things through his faith in the power of God and his belief in his Father's love, the love that I witnessed between Father and Son cannot be described, then it was over for me, and I returned from being in the Spirit, I sat there completely speechless and numb concerning these things that my ears were hearing and my eyes were seeing, never once in twenty-five years had I once heard or even considered that the victory was found in the events that are described in Revelation 5, seeing that I had not once ever considered that this is where the victory was, I then realized that I did not even understand as to why the victory was here, and what was in the book that had been sealed. Then the Lord continued and said, it was when I was found worthy to take the book and open it that my heavenly Father then gladly gave unto me his prize, his entire heavenly kingdom, even though do not yet perceive the truth of these things that I am speaking to you, you will shortly, says the Lord, for I did not win my Father's kingdom for myself, for why would I win that which I previously had? I won my Father's kingdom for all those who would come to believe on me. 
desiring for me to be their lord, their friend, their king, their brother, and their father, I won my father's kingdom for those who allowed for me to reign in their hearts and their minds with peace, and with truth, and with joy, and with wisdom, and with love, you know that it is written that no eye has seen, nor has any ear heard, and neither has there been any heart that has been able to perceive the things that are of God, for who has seen and heard and understood that these are the things which have prepared for the church, my bride, now hear and understand, the words that are contained in the book from which I removed the seals from off of, these were the words that reveal the Father's heart unto man, it is because these words were sealed that man was kept in bondage to his own ignorance of God, the ignorance that allowed all the things of darkness to rule and reign over the hearts and minds of all men, keeping the knowledge of God veiled from the eyes and the hearts of man, John wept because he knew that only he who could be found worthy to open the seals of the book would also be he who would receive authority and power to open the eyes and the ears of the faithful to see and hear of the things of God, the things which God has prepared for man from the beginning for all those who would come to love God which is the God kind of life, since the fall of Adam, man has been alienated and separated from the things that God has prepared for his people which is the life of God, are you able to hear and understanding that which I am speaking to you? I mean the life of God, which is not like any manner of earthly life, and neither is it like the life that is experienced by any of the heavenly creatures, for the life of God is that life which has only been experienced by the Father and the Son. Is it possible for a man to be one with his heavenly father's heart and not be in the very likeness of father's heart? Is it possible for one to be a son of God and not be completely equal with God? But who can see and hear these words? In the darkness, man has been kept in bondage to his ignorance of the life of God, that is. He has had eyes to see, but has not been able to see the things of God, he has ears to hear but he has not been able to understand the truth of the words of God. He has a heart, but he has not been able to perceive the nature of the life of God, for as high as the heavens have been above the earth, so also has the nature of the life of God been above the nature of the life of man, though you have sought to understand and to know the truth of these things. And though I have allowed for you to taste of the power and the truth of my life, you still have yet to come into the fullness of this truth. The truth that reveals the nature of the life of God, even now, your heart has remained veiled and your eyes have scales upon them, keeping hidden the glory of my life from you. But you are drawing closer and closer to the fullness of time when all of these things which are written in the book shall be seen and heard, and then fulfilled, I am now doing a new thing, and all things shall be changed, and my life is that new thing, remember, until the fullness of time comes you are still under the blood that I shed upon the cross for you, let my blood continue to be a witness unto you of the great love that I have for you, you have heard that my word is living and that it is powerful, and though you have tasted of power, you have yet to experience the fullness of this truth yet, yes, my word has been unto you as the word of correction, as a hammer that has broken your pride into pieces, yes, my word has been as a sword that has pierced your heart, to reveal to you the hidden things of darkness as well as all of those counsels which are not of me, yes, my word has been unto you the truth that has revealed unto the lies of Satan, so as to sanctify you, yes, my word has been given unto you to increase your faith, dissolving your doubts, your fears, as well as all of your unbelief, you have not known of these blessings yet because you have not yet asked to see the truth concerning the life of God, yet, you know that it is written that when I appear unto you, you shall see me as I am, and you shall be changed into my likeness, now ask for to open your eyes to see the life of God, and then it shall be given unto you according to your belief, you have not asked to see and hear these things because it was hidden from your heart till this day to ask to know these things, that is, now is the appointed time to be made partakers of the life of God partakers of the inheritance that I won for those who overcome the world through faith in me, when my word is unveiled, it heals your heart and transforms the thoughts of your mind, brothers, on that day when the father looked at the lamb before his throne, he saw before him one who had been rejected, one who had been ridiculed and mocked, one who had been shamed, one who had suffered greatly, and one who was so grieved in his heart that it passed the point of unthinkable agony all for the sake of his beloved bride, 
the king saw his son as a lamb who had been despitefully slain at the hands of his beloved, this is he who was willing to give up all of the kingdom and the glory that he had, and then come into this world in the likeness of sinful flesh, just to have the opportunity to win his beloved's heart, and when the son stood before his heavenly father, clothed in the garments of rejection and scorn that were patterned in blood and filth, the father remembered all that his son there had battled against, all that he had endured, all that he had journeyed through, all that he had suffered, and all that he had overcome in his attempt to win the heart of his church, at whose very hand he was even slain by, the father then said, My heart greatly rejoices, for the love that is in your heart towards your bride has been proven to be sure, seeing that no amount of rejection, or scorn, or shame, or threats, or sufferings, or persecution, or beatings, or cursing, and not even death itself has been able to cause you to waver in your love towards your bride, therefore, he who is standing before me is without any fault, or any spot, and neither is there any blame in his heart, for his love towards his bride is pure, can there be any greater love that one can have for another than the love that is willing to endure all things, bear all things, suffer all things, and lose all as this love that my son has for his bride? Then the king removed his hand from off of the book, and said to his son, You are worthy to take this book and to lose the seals from off it, for in this book are the words of life, words that have power to redeem the heart of your beloved from the lies that she has been seduced to believe, they are powerful and living words, and they shall break into pieces the lies that your bride has been held captive to believe, these are the words of life that will free your bride from all of her captivity to death. Then all the host of heaven fell upon their faces and worshipped the Lamb, for by his great love, he had been found worthy to win that which no man had ever won before. The power and the kingdom to win the hearts and the minds of man, the beloved of God, and they sung a new song, a song that could not have been sung before, saying, Worthy is the Lamb who took the book and opened the seals thereof. Then the Lamb who was slain took the book and opened it, and all the words of the glory of God and the power of God, and of the very life of God, they came forth from out of the book, entering into the Lamb who was slain, and the word that had been flesh then became words of Father's heart, full of truth, and power, and love, and grace, and life, then all the heavenly creatures continued bowed before the Lamb, praising God and glorifying His Son, saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive the kingdom with all its glory, and wisdom, and power and strength, and honor, it was not the cross that gave the prince the victory, and neither was it the resurrection in that tomb that gave him the victory, but rather it was the great love that was in his heart for his beloved that gained him the victory, for if it had not been for the greatness of his love, he could never have endured and triumphed over all that he encountered, by no other means could his bride be freed from her captivity except by his love and his father's power. By no other means could she have escaped the terrible end that was awaiting her except by his love and his father's power, by no other means could her heart be won except by his love and his father's power, if it were not for his love, there would never have been any hope to escape the miseries of this present evil world, and then the prince, as the spirit of the Lord, returned and entered into the hearts and the minds of all those who were Jerusalem waiting on him, just as he has been doing for two thousand years since entering into the hearts and the minds of those who would receive him and believe on him, to win their hearts and their minds with the blessings of abundant life, when he wins her heart, she will no longer have any love for this present evil world, nor will she have any affection or desire to believe the seducing lies that are therein, it was not until she fully learned and understood all that her prince is willing to do for her before she allowed her heart to be won, but she now believes with all of her heart that she is truly the object of all of the prince's affection, she is the beloved, the bride who has continued faithful to her prince, trusting on him, that through his love and great power, she shall be delivered, she shall be redeemed, she shall be healed, she shall be taught all truth, she shall be forgiven, she shall be changed, and she shall receive the kingdom that her prince won for her, for he has come to rescue her from death with the words of life. She now eagerly awaits for her prince to come to rescue and redeem her, now, the prince is about to return again to the world that rejected and slew him, and he will surely return riding on a white horse, he is coming for his bride, she who allowed her heart to be won by his love.
he is going to receive his bride and himself, the love of his life, he is going to have a sword in his hand, and with the word of truth proceeding forth out of his mouth, he is going to destroy all of the lies that Satan has deceived her with, he is going to avenge his bride, destroying all lying words, all false doctrines, and all the laws of man that have kept her in bondage, he is going to destroy all spirits and all the rulers of this present evil world who have tormented her, he is going to destroy all powers, all principalities, all darkness, all lies, and even death itself, so that he might save his bride, he is coming to her rescue, then shall there be a great celebration feast in her honor, a feast so great that no man could ever imagine the likes thereof, then the prince is going to give unto his bride all that he had won for her, his kingdom, his power, his riches, his wisdom, his strength, his honor, his life, his glory, his blessings, and his name, he has become to her the prince who truly rides in on a white horse to save her, then she shall receive the reward she has desired to have, a happy ending, beginning with the love of her life, to those who are of this world, who do not believe, eternal life is nothing more than a fable that ends before it ever begins, but to those who do believe, it is the beginning that never has an end, but even now, your heart has remained veiled and your eyes have scales upon them, keeping hidden the glory of my life from you, but you are drawing closer and closer to the fullness of time when all of these things which are written in the book shall be seen and heard, and then fulfilled, I am now doing a new thing, and all things shall be changed, and my life is that new thing, remember, until the fullness of time comes, you are still under the blood that I shed upon the cross for you but when the perfect comes, the partial passes away, let my blood continue to be a witness unto you of the great love that I have for you, as well as a witness of my faithfulness, for I am the faithful and true witness, and I will perform all those things which I am revealing to you, when the Lord finished speaking these words to me, I yearn to fill your heart with words of truth, words of life, and the words of my power, I yearn to fill you with the fullness of me, the fullness of the kingdom that I won for you. As a bride takes the name of her husband, so also do I yearn to give to you my name, my character, my name, and my 